the special needs and disability mm -hmm. to get that um that experience of living on campus. Mm -hmm. Radio show, man, they everywhere. So, make that radio show. I'm your host, Andreas, and we're bringing this one via Zoom. And we have our special guest on Zoom with us, Miss Whitney A. Ford, who has services by Whitney A. Ford LLC, where it's a professional resume writer, certified mindset coach, graphic designer, published author, and public speaker. Thank you, Whitney, for you know waking up this morning and being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Me. You're welcome. So let's uh, let's get into what got you into uh, you know wanting to offer all these professional services. Like, what was the catalyst where you was like, you know what, I'm gonna start this business and be able to offer these services to individuals and others as well. Well, as you can see, there's like an array of just different, like not random things, but. I've always been a person that wanted to do pretty much everything. Like, I wanted to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And so it took me a while to find my sweet spot of, like, okay, what does this, what do I call all of this? You know, mm -hmm. how do I, um, because in marketing something, you can't just be like, I do everything. You have to be able to describe it. Mm -hmm. And so before I even get into Becoming services by Whitney A. Ford LLC. I was just, I moved a lot, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Some people who have followed me for a while may know me as he is my crutch. Um, I had that sort of a play on words about because I have, um, I do have spina bifida. I use forearm crutches and I use a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And it was more so given the um slogan or whatever that I'm leaning on God, you know, um he is my crutch. I'm not just mm -hmm. a person on crutches or what yeah. have you. But I found that that was just getting just seen as just, you know, about disability and I wanted to be known as all of the parts of me, you know, uh a woman, a black woman, mm -hmm. uh, and you know that part of my story, but it's that's not my whole story. And mm -hmm. so I said, you know, why not just go as who I am? Then you know, Whitney A. Ford services by Whitney A. Ford. I got into doing resumes about two years ago. Mm -hmm. I've always been a writer. I write poetry. I just write. Mm -hmm almost all forms. And I've always, like I said, wanted to be one that helps. And again, going into that, that part of my story being a person that's living with a disability, I know that there's laws in place against certain discriminations and what have you, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna be there. Mm -hmm. And so that part stemmed from that. But again, I don't want it to be limited to 
I just do it for a certain set of people. Yeah. So I think all of it just kind of it's under an umbrella, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah. So, so that's uh, why. Right? Mm-hmm. So okay, so with the like the resume um, writing, you know, because you said you like to write. Um, a lot of people, you know, their strong suits aren't like writing, right, and applying for jobs. Mm-hmm. What has been some of the typical things is you're pulling in clients, you're seeing that's like you know wrong with your resume, or what are some things that people shouldn't put on their resume that they actually put on their resume? People think that they're supposed to put. And, and depending on what you're applying for, you, you mm-hmm. in some instances should put everything on there. But there's a lot of just like uh, a mess of information on some mm-hmm. people's resumes, and not all of the information applies toward the position they're going for. It's just like I know how to do this, I know how to do that, so I'll put it on there because it, it everything sounds good. Mm-hmm. But they're looking for what they're looking for Mm -hmm. and people don't know that you have about six seconds to impress these people when they look at your your resume and if they're just seeing a bunch of stuff and it's like "Eh," you know Mm -hmm. and then you have pictures pictures aren't always a bad thing Mm -hmm. but again everything kind of depends on what you're you're shooting for mm-hmm. it's a good idea to include a picture if you're you know in a certain field like um you're maybe you're a model or okay. you're trying to get bookings for something that's more showy of you know mm-hmm. your face or mm-hmm. to impress in that type of way and then that's format you're Resume shouldn't just be a list. Mm-hmm. You don't want it to look like it's advertising for the job you used to do. Like, I did this. this. It's describing what the job was, not what you did, not what you brought to it, not what, mm-hmm. what um, I don't know, what customer rate you brought up. Or, mm-hmm. you no, know, you want the specifics. It's supposed to be branding about you. You know, if you're going into a medical field, why this person is important to the medical field, mm-hmm. not just a list. Yeah, and I definitely uh, get that and I see how, you know, the whole resume has changed over the course of time. And, you know, in you know the corporate world, I don't think I've written one in, let's see here, I've been, I've been a self-employed since 20 <laughs> Oh five, it did you know four times since twenty thirteen. So yeah, I haven't used a resume in quite some time. So I'm sure mm-hmm. like you know, change and like you said, you know some things will require like you know pictures if you're trying to do modeling or some type of you know visual visual aid that's in that industry that's you know appropriate for that. So mm-hmm. uh, not only you do the resumes, you also do your graphics and things, but you're uh, like the fact that you know you're a published author. So yeah. what have you uh, published? And also uh, public speaking. How did you uh, jump into those industries? Um, I would have never thought I would get into public speaking because I'm actually not a person that likes spotlight. I don't. Mm-hmm. But when I get to talking about something I'm passionate about, that kind of goes out of the window. Mm-hmm. So in 2017, Mm-hmm. I was crowned Miss Wheelchair Alabama um, okay. in 2017. And mm-hmm. so I think that experience kind of put, put me more into like, oh, I can I can do this speaking stuff. Mm-hmm. And I saw that it was benefiting other people. Mm-hmm. And that made me, I guess, want to do it more. Um, I did speaking at things like Um, At Troy University, they do this summer um, program for young people who live with special needs and disabilities Mm -hmm. to get that that experience of living on campus Mm -hmm. and to get it 
more relaxed, I would say, first. And they get to ask questions about independent living and things that it would take another person who has experience what they have to answer. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, and I was surprised by the the young people that, that, that came to me and just were like, you know, with their eyes wide and like, how did you do this? And will you be my mentor? And things like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm all about doing what benefits other people. Yeah. It sounds and like you really did uh, connect with them. And, uh, yeah, and some, a lot of them I'm life. still connected with today. Yeah. So, and then I'm passionate about mental health um, mm-hmm. just because of my own stories and a lot of stuff that I see around me. Mm-hmm. I have had experiences with um, suicide attempts. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, in 2019, I was diagnosed with de- with clinical depression and anxiety mm-hmm. disorder. So again, it's just kind of always about others, you know, mm-hmm. making sure that others don't feel alone. And even mm-hmm. even the book, uh, it's sister, how are you? And it's poetry. Mm-hmm. And it uh, it's filled with book um, poetry that I wrote at different times in my life. It was more so like um, a lot of my entries, mm-hmm. and even that stemmed from a certain place of helping people along with mental health, because before I just mentioned that I was diagnosed with my clinical depression and my anxiety disorder in 2019. Mm-hmm. But um, in hindsight, thinking about my, even my childhood, mm-hmm. it was there. Mm-hmm. And I would say that poetry was my way of coping. I had a conversation with my dad a couple of days ago when he was talking about um, the first time when I was a little girl, like in my own words, probably about seven years old, it's for us that I didn't know what was going on with my disability. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a regular day. Uh, my siblings and some of the other kids were at the house, and you know, everybody just, it's probably summer, everybody just going out running and playing. Mm -hmm. And I had the ability to run and play, but not quite like them. And it frustrated me. And I didn't Mm -hmm. even know exactly why, of course. Mm -hmm. And he told me that I told him like, I want to play like them. Mm -hmm. And I bawled. And I, um, after that day, I was thinking about, you know, that that went away in that type of way, but in every stage of our life, mm-hmm. it's different than others. And I still have that feeling, but now I'm older, I have language for how I'm feeling and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so if I was to describe what Sister How Are You was, it's like the language I had for each stage. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things I love to talk about, just to help people pivot through life. Yeah. I had to do a lot of pivoting. How was that, uh, when you put that book out, how was that received within your network and the community in general? Did people gravitate towards it because of your story? Um, Could they connect to it and see, you know, you helping them through telling your story? A lot of, I've gotten a lot of good feedback in people saying that they see themselves in it. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, when they're having their, you know, maybe taking their mental health day and 
Mm-hmm. Everything is what they pick up to, you know, have that reset. And I'm really proud of that. Mm-hmm. Just to think. And again, the reason it always goes to seeing what it does for other people for me, I feel like. Because it was just my notebook with my poems in it for years that I had for years. And actually, when I was doing Miss Wheelchair, um, I was getting ready for the national pageant. Mm-hmm. And of course, I had to raise funds to get there. And that's when I published it. So it mm-hmm. wasn't like I, I, I did always want to be an author, but I didn't have the nerve to do it until then. Mm-hmm. It, it, the pageant gave you the courage to go ahead and, you know, because it was like one hand washing mm-hmm. the other type of situation. So I mm-hmm. definitely get it. So since you've done that, um, and then, you know, you're also uh, a graphic designer, so you have this creative side about you. So how are you, like, balancing that? And also, are you thinking about, you know, any other creative endeavors, whether it's, like, another book that you want to put out or anything in the future? Um, it's definitely a balancing act just because I'm still working on, um, I guess a schedule of Mm -hmm. things because, um, I actually just graduated, um, college last month and I'm going back in spring of next year. So I'm working on. Congratulations. Making sure I, um, thank you. Mm -hmm organized you know mm-hmm. when everything like that um and as far as adding to it that's exactly what I was getting into about um wanting to get into everything because there's a lot more that I want to do but I'm trying to face myself mm, yeah <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to just put everything in there and then you know be seen like all of the things and stuff like that yeah yeah but to answer the question, yes, um, I am working on actually a sister. How are you too? Okay. Um, and I am working on a ebook. Um, I mentioned the pivoting. Um, I'm turning 29 in August, okay. and so I want to release an ebook just talking about 29 ways to pivot through life, you know? Okay. Just because I think we get so engulfed in making things like perfect or Mm -hmm. doing things the right way when Mm -hmm. sometimes it's just about how you maneuver through what you might not have made the plate, but and how you, you know, you doctor it up or how you, what you do with it, what's on your plate. And mm-hmm. I think that's something that the world needs to hear about. Yeah. So uh, tell me about like, you know, being a mindset coach and actually conveying it to potential clients and getting them to understand the services that you're offering them. That has been interesting um, because mindset can cover yeah uh, a lot right yeah um, range of things. What I try to um, say to people to make it simpler mm-hmm. is transitional, which kind of goes with the word pivot. You know, it's just transitioning through challenges. And your mindset at that time. Mm -hmm. Because what's going to get you through whatever in life is going to be the mindset you have at the time. You know, you can, you know, as I say, that glass half full, glass half empty type of Mm -hmm. thing. And you can have two people that experience the same thing and they experience it differently because they're two different people. They have two different mindsets. Mm -hmm. 
So you, mindset is everything. Yeah. So tell me about your journey into entrepreneurship. I always ask this question with a lot of my guests. Actually, I think every guest I've asked this. Mm-hmm. So as you know, you're going on this entrepreneur journey and you have your inner core, right? You have your people that are around you that you confide in, things of that nature. When you set out to go and do yours, what was the reaction? Because, you know, we tell people our ideas and visions that we have for ourselves. Sometimes, you know, that information isn't received like we think it should be. Um, Sometimes, you know, people embrace that information and want to support. How was the reaction to your core or your network of folks that was in your inner circle when you decided to pursue uh, these different endeavors? i say it was supportive. Um, in a sense of like, if, you know, what you want to do, you should do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say it's unsupportive in an aspect, but I would say just like with um, graduating college or, you know, some some of the things that you can end up being fresh generation in, it's one thing for someone to, um, you know, say, you know, you should do that. I believe in you. And then another for you to have resources or, you know, someone that can tell you, okay, this is how you can Mm do X, Y, Z. I don't Mm -hmm. think I had a whole lot of that, but um, I think it's also important to, in order really for a business to grow and last, to reach beyond that you know, and find the the tribe beyond that and have thick skin. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not really? you know for the faint of heart out here. Yes. <laughs> so what's been the most rewarding thing um that you could think of in pursuing these different um projects and entrepreneurship? The most Um, probably what I mentioned before, just the people that, because some of those that I've met even way back when I was doing Miss Wheelchair, Mm -hmm. some of them went on to graduate college before I did Mm -hmm. and, you know, to pursue things that when I met them, they were like, you know, I don't know if I can really do it and all of that, but Meeting little old me, you you mm-hmm. feel like you can do it. So that um, the the reviews, like you said, um, like you asked rather, people saying they see themselves in the book, even still, because I published this book in two thousand seventeen, mm-hmm. and I still get you know um, I'm sent one out to someone recently and she, the day she got it, she messaged me, it's like, I'm stopping already. Mm-hmm. This, gives, this gives me a even better, more, um, I guess the word would be like, merciful look at people, even myself, than I had before. Mm-hmm. And I, to think that I'm just hope, just keeping this little book to myself yeah. and it's changing people's lives. I think that's really rewarding. And even mm-hmm. people say, I got, I got an interview and, you know, that they were having such a hard time before. Mm-hmm. I, I get fulfillment, I guess, out of growth. Um, you might see on my social media pages, you know, I eat uh, plants and water human. And that's mm-hmm. really what I'm about. And I guess you would say those services is how I choose to provoke growth in people. 
Mm-hmm. And so when I see it, I love to see it. It's kind of like when I play anything, you know, because I like to plant flowers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, in real life. And you get a fulfillment out of like your hard work. You mm-hmm. you had to wait for it to start growing and all this. And then when you see the flower come, it's like Mm-hmm. That oh, was worth it. You know, all <laughs> exactly. My, my patience. Um, so what's one thing that you would change about any of the industries that you participate in um as an entrepreneur? Um, you know, because you know, there's there's good things or whatever, but then there's also bad things. So what's something you would change? Mm. Well, I think that when I did publish Sister How Are You, mm-hmm. um, that, that kind of goes back to the the resources and not really, um, just I'm kind of just doing it mm-hmm. and I have learned as I went. Mm-hmm. I think that if I was just now publishing it and knowing, okay, you need to do this this, this, and this to get it more out there quicker. Yeah, would have been a different experience because yeah. it is um, known to some, but it's not as big as it could be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am proud of where it is. I am in the process of getting it. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Reader's Magnet. Mm. They mm. they reached out to me to have it at a book fair in Chicago, Illinois okay. in September. So okay. it's, it's getting there. But mm-hmm. I think that if I had known some of the things I know now, mm-hmm. it would have been already there. Yeah. Well, you know, that you didn't know or whatever. So, you know, and yeah. we don't learn industries until we actually jump into them and participate yeah. within them. That's how I look at it. Um, so regardless of the research that we might do, and until we're active in those actual industries, we just don't know. Um, so it's always like, you know, we can look at stuff hindsight 2020 or whatever. Um, but that's the learning curve that, you know, we go through. Well, uh, so... What are some of the other goals or do you have goals that you're setting for yourself uh, for the rest of the year? And do you have goals for 2024? Yes. Um, I want to build. Um, I recently actually did this office. This is an office mm-hmm. I built, built mm-hmm. put together in my home. And mm-hmm. I'm working on getting more um in person with things um Mm -hmm. i say one of the challenges i've faced with entrepreneurship is it goes hand in hand with um of course my having my physical disabilities because i have the nerve to be an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. with um all these things going on i mentioned the clinical depression the anxiety mm-hmm. disorder, and as well as I'm still working on getting more mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely one of my goals, just because it's going to, of course, help get more out there. Like, mm-hmm. um, for example, uh, to do more in person mm-hmm. interviews like this. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in doing what I can till I do what I want. Till I can't do what I want. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with that approach, too. You know, you do what you can, build up little momentum, things of that nature, until you can do what you want to do. But I'm like, I think that's like a that's like one of the key cornerstones of entrepreneurship anyway. We do what yeah. we can until we can do what we want. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, you might have to put that on a t-shirt or something like that and sell it. <laughs> I might need to. Speaking of t-shirts, um, I didn't mention the the y'all ain't gonna worry me movement that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, 
-hmm. this t-shirt is actually one of them. I have t-shirts. Okay. Caps, um, that hats rather, um, mm -hmm. mugs, and something else that I'm not naming. I, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. And even that movement, it's all, even though it's an array of things, they all kind of connect, at least in my mind, they do. Yeah. Um, I started the Y'all Ain't Gonna Worry Me movement stemming from more so um, my anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you hear Y'all Ain't Gonna Worry Me, you think, you know, the Black woman mantra. Mm -hmm. But, and, and it, that, in there, that's part of it. But I want us to be able to, because when we think of um, the imposter syndromes and things that we can face, mm -hmm. it's more so, it's not even, let, let me speak for myself, it's mm -hmm. not even necessarily as much of them. Mm -hmm. It's more so my own thoughts or my own, you know. Um, sleeping on myself. Mm -hmm. So, the y'all ain't gonna worry me movement. I would say that y'all and y'all ain't gonna worry me is more than even just people. It's, you know, um, negative self talk mm -hmm. and physical obstacles that may be in one's way. We, we're still going to pursue what we're pursuing, whether it be our dreams, our personal goals, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. this stuff is not going to worry me to where it deters me. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so that's one of my goals too, to, to um, release a course under that. Okay, that's what's up. So have you gotten to the point where in your entrepreneurial journey, where, you know, because people see you moving and you're doing things and you're making connections. Have mm -hmm. you gotten to the point to where people have came back to you or a person and be like, hey, I've seen your story um, or I witnessed your story and seen you overcome things. You've inspired me to go and chase my dreams now. I have. In some of the biggest and smallest ways, um, I mentioned that I graduated from college in mm -hmm. May and this wasn't even like something that I I did do an interview with um, Uniquely Made mm -hmm. who is a, a, a similar type of um, business you know she is a woman living with cerebral palsy so we were talking about the the angle of school living with disabilities. But mm -hmm. um, this is before I even had, had done that interview. Mm -hmm. I had an, a doctor's appointment that I had to change because it was around the date of my graduation. And I just mentioned, you know, I can't come that day because I'm graduating that day. Mm -hmm. And then when I changed it and I saw her, she was just like, uh, I, I'm assuming because she, you know, having all the paperwork, knowing the situation, I guess, that I'm in. When I saw them, she goes, I signed back up for school. You That's know, so if you just, I could have not even mentioned that to her, you know? Mm -hmm. So. You got here just changing lives. Yeah, just. <laughs> um, not, not on accident. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. I'm like you're out here being a beacon of hope and inspiration to folks. So I yeah. definitely uh I appreciate that and I like that. Um so uh let everybody know. Um, uh, you know, the ones who tune in and stuff like that and who's gonna watch this video, they wanna support and if they need services um uh, for professional resume writing, or if they want to go buy a book, follow you on social media, any of those caveats. Where do they need to go and how they need to contact you? So I do have my link tree in all of my social media bios, which will have the link to purchase a book. Um, 
to email me to talk about services such as professional resume services. So, um, my Facebook is, of course, services by Whitney A. Ford, LLC. Um, my Instagram is Whitney A. Ford underscore one underscore. My Twitter is Whitney A. Ford underscore underscore two underscores. And I'm on, I'm on TikTok, Whitney A. Ford one. And I'm on YouTube, Whitney A. Ford. And of course, you can find the links to all of those things on there. However, I'm going to go ahead and give you uh, my email. It is resumes by wit, W H I T 27 at gmail.com. You can put it in the subject line, um, graphic design, if you're looking for that. You can put it in the subject professional um, resume writing if you're looking for that. My website is under construction, it's on the way. Um, so just stay tuned and, you know, get in the loop with me on social media. And when it's launched, you will know about it. All right, well, Whitney, I appreciate you, you know, taking the time today to share your story and being an inspiration to folks out here. Uh, we need more people like you out there in the world. Um, so everybody out there, yeah, make sure y'all go and follow. She gave out the social media, and of course, it's going to appear on the screen. Um, and if y'all have not, y'all make sure y'all go and y'all download that Bank Dot Radio Show app and stay continued to all the different interviews we have in the future and all the different skits and content that we'll be putting out. But thank you, Whitney. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're I welcome. You. And uh, I'm going to let you get back to your, <laughs> to your morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have a good day, Val. You too. Yeah, we're the fastest jam I have ever eaten. Oh, wow. uh, I have that as a testimonial. Yeah, and then you got some nice water. Some nice mountain brighter. Mountain brighter. My wisdom could let in the leash next to Ben as after.